Are we going to see a Haymaker play? Wait, Grim Guy's holding on to his power? But the two armies are positioned so closely that a single tsunami push could finish him off before he charges up his Super CO meter. Wait, Kill Me First is holding on for the Super CO power too? This entire game will be decided with a single push of a button. Let's have a look at how our two opponents stack up. In the player two position, commanding the Yellow Comet Army, today debuting his 100th match. When you face him, your odds are grim. Grim Guy! Having a look at the stats here, Grim Guy boasts 65 wins, a positive win rate for sure, ranking him 54th among the Global League. You can see some of the volatility of being a Grim player, with his last four matches being evenly divided with two wins and two losses, earning him a current ELO of 1338.42. You can see from the CO Affinity Pool that Grim Guy's top four COs are all Grim all the time, so you can be certain that Grim Guy's strongest CO is himself. And the challenger in the player one position, a man bearing the name that advises you to finish him off first, but who is rarely ever placing last. Kill me first! Kill me first has been on an absolute tear with victories in his last four games. He might just be pushing to capture a top place in the top players of all time ranking 7th in Global League and with the current ELO of 1605.14, he is not far off. Of his top played tier 3 COs, Drake is ranked number 3, showing a moderate amount of playtime. Kill Me First's real-life superpower is telling you if you pick Yellow Comet, pick again. But in recording, I have him piloting Cobalt Ice, because I already recorded this and I'm not doing it again. Let's have a look at our CO matchup, starting with Drake. Drake is the Tier 3 Naval Unit Specialist CO. You might not see a lot of naval play in Advanced Wars by web, or Advanced Wars for that matter, but Drake does have his place. Drake's day-to-day -day power features bonuses for naval units, including 25% defense and plus one movement. Although this does come at the cost of air units, especially battlecopters, losing 20% attack. Battlecopters are absolutely necessary on most maps featuring an airport, and Drake's are no exception to this. Players will have to take extra caution when choosing their engagements. Drake's units do not receive a penalty for movement in rain, which gives added benefit to timing the use of the Typhoon superpower. Speaking of powers, Drake's regular power, Tsunami, is four full bars of energy, and it does one damage to all enemy units, and additionally drains half of their fuel. Typhoon is a supercharged Tsunami. Coming in at a cost of seven bars of power, it does two HP of damage to all enemy units, having their fuel, and it also changes the weather to rain for one day. The larger the map is, the better Drake's power scales, because the more enemy units there are, the more damage his power will do, although keep in mind it does not do damage to loaded units. Larger maps means more fuel consumption for more movement of more units. Both having fuel and having the amount of fuel while giving a movement penalty can definitely give Drake the advantage. The longer a match goes, the better Drake becomes, so you want to defeat him before you see his second, if not third, tsunami, which could spell doom. Grim can best be described as a glass cannon CO. Every single one of Grim's damage dealing units gains 30% base attack, but this comes at the cost of all of his units having a decrease in defense by 20%. This makes Grim a very technical CO to play, as the stability of his forces depends greatly upon unit movement positioning to take favorable engagements while avoiding enemy counterattack. His regular CO power, Knuckle Duster, increases his base damage from 30% to 50%, and Haymaker likewise increases it to 80 for the cost of 6 energy bars. Both of these powers give Grim the ability to push into enemy enemy troops very hard. Timing power use with proper engagements and unit positioning allow Grim to absolutely devastate enemy forces while taking minimal unit losses. The fragile nature of Grim's units, he's really not concerned with Drake's tsunami or typhoon damage or even the loss of fuel as his units will disintegrate when being attacked. Additionally, ports will not really be a factor in this match for anything but income. I have yet to see Grit or Kindle make use of a battleship on the port, so there is very little likelihood that Drake or Grim would. Although Drake is a higher tier CO than Grim and generally more consistent, because facing a skilled Grim player is so rare on the ladder, there is a bit of balance between the power levels of the COs as Grim's opponents on a map such as this would have very little experience to draw from. Let's get a closer look at the map and some of the opening strategies of the capture phase. And just for extra tricky trickeriness, I have selected a completely different game from the one you're watching, so no spoilers here. We're going to actually zoom into the player 2 side, which according to this map has a 49% win rate. So a slight disadvantage, and we're going to have a look at the one base side. So we should expect to see an infantry build, and we do. Now this infantry the, has essentially an optimal capture path for the first couple of days, and a couple of builds are just going to be infantry, infantry. And then depending on how your opponent builds stuff, whether you need to react to an early recon, to some tank aggression, to them moving really heavily uh, north with an artillery and some infantry, uh, will dictate kind of how you move into the eastern quadrant. And the western quadrant will essentially be back caps, but they'll be started a lot earlier than you would expect. And you'll basically decide whether you want to move from the city towards the cities themselves or towards the airport. So we'll skip to the next day. We'll see movement of this infantry to the east, I believe. Sorry, to the west. 
So to the west to begin this capture. Next we'll see infantry and then out to the east. So off to the next day, we'll finish this cap here. And then this infantry will probably move to capture this building here. This obviously going east. Cap finished, moving east. We'll probably see another infantry built, infantry built. Uh, infantry here, uh, the west, westmost, the westmost infantry will be moving to capture this base. I think this infantry will begin moving west to start to position to get the comm tower or to provide backup. And this one is completely safe back here for the time being. You're not going to see engagements till day six, day seven with early recon on this building. This one may also actually begin to move down and take this building first. That's actually probably more likely. It just really depends on what your opponent's doing because this over here is their two base side, strong side, so you're going to see a push into this area very quickly. Yeah, so into the capture. Yeah, so this infantry is moving down here. He's going to be taking this city here. So that means there's probably not as much uh, fast aggression, so fast moving units are a recon on this side. So he's probably safe to capture this and either take an, a hit to the infantry or be able to retreat it, which means this guy's probably going to head to the east next turn. Let's find out. And one more infantry built. Finish the cap first, let's hope. Ah, uh, see this, this is a mistake a lot of players make. Finish your caps first, do your caps first. They're no brainers, you don't have to think about them to get out of your way really quickly and it means you're not going to miss them or lose time on them but taking this city here day five finishing the cap easternmost infantry moves as far east so we're looking at depending on how things go either taking the airport a little bit early and going copter or taking this city and going income and taking the chain so this is actually better for an income chain because one two turns from now that's one third thousand Three, four turns from now, that's another 1,000 plus the additional 1,000 in between here. So you're looking at about a 7,000 net. Uh, whereas here, same income initially, 1,000, but then you're looking for one turn without capping. So you're going to be 1,000 behind for one, two, three turns, 3,000 deficit. So it's better to capture these if you're going for the income game. But if you think you need to tech into a copter earlier, or you have some plans for that because there isn't an anti-air out and you're saving, then you may want to go that route. And this infantry heading out, it's still two turns away. Sorry, yeah, it's still two turns away from beginning a cap. Day six. What do we see? We're going to finish our cap. Finish your caps early, ladies and gentlemen. Caps, they're what's for breakfast. Okay, finish the cap. Now we're going to do some infantry movements. Yep, so we're taking the airport first. This infantry is heading back, so we're probably looking for this infantry here to cover the port and this one to either come across for support. If there's stuff here, you can see there's a bit of enemy units here. It's an infantry, so not a big deal. Probably going to come here to A, cover this in case there is additional movement or blockage that's required, and then also be able to double back and grab the comm tower within a few turns. Oh, actually, I'm incorrect. So he's actually going back here to be able to jump on either property, so next turn provided that there's no recon aggression coming my way that I don't see. If this was even a recon, one, two, three, four, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not, no. So you actually would not be able to get recon aggression this early into this spot if if it wasn't already here a turn ago. So this guy's most likely going comm tower. This guy's most likely going to port. And we see our movement. We're gonna see a tank built. So tank means uh, it's a weak side tank. That's probably really good for fending off whatever's coming this way or this way. But remember, let's look at this for a second. Your reinforcement zone, it's going to take you two turns to get out into the main zone regardless. So if you take the tank towards the east, you're covering part of this area here, but that's the chokiest area, and you're more likely to see aggression coming from this side here. But taking the tank to this side, it's one turn to cover, two turns for full reinforcement. Although if there is an artillery or recon sneaking up this way, trying to do something about this port, some shenanigans, this tank coming over can cover that quite easily. So this is probably your best buy at this point. Let's skip a day ahead and see what happens. So we do get recon aggression on day seven. Could he have moved that? I'm not sure. No, so he finishes the cap day six. Finishes the cap day six, takes the recon hit, 
So he's going to lose 200 on the infantry repair, but gain 800 based on the 1000 income and be able to retreat this somewhere, either using it to block. Um, so this tank is probably going to have to swing to the right unless there's another threat coming up on the left hand side, simply because it's going to need to fend off this recon and you don't want the recon coming over here unchecked and blocking these two caps. Although, depending on your income, and at this point in the match, you probably should be around 12k income, you could always threaten with a copter early if you wanted to, but it really depends on what's happening in the center, right? So again, we have options here to move the tank over and cover, or move it to the eastern or western side. Or move it to the western side based on what's going on over here. So I think we're going to see switchovers and caps on the next turn. Let's check that out. So infantry from the opponent is moving up. Yeah. So recover two, take the city, sorry, take the port and the comm tower. Let's see what he does. Infantry takes the airport. So it's three nice caps in a turn. This guy's probably going to head towards the uh, buildings in the north. Let's see what he does with this infantry. This building is now going to be uh, highly contested. It will be very difficult if there's a lot of aggression up here to capture this. And it might just stay neutral for a chunk of the match, depending on how the pushes go and the usage of power. Yeah, so we're moving the tank to the east to basically force this recon away from this unguarded side. It does leave no tank on the west side over, sorry. Yeah, on the west side over here. And remember, this is a two base on one base uh, action. So it can get overwhelmed quite easily. And that's kind of why your um, HQ is better tucked onto this side. And we have a second tank. So this tank, depending on what's going on, could swing over here and basically uh, give reinforcements to this tank, but in all likelihood is going to swing left. Let's check that out one more time as we enter main game. So let's um, have a look at the following turn. See what he does with the infantry. So the infantry is actually waiting here. So I guess he's baiting an additional attacker, uh, hoping to... He figures this is going to go away. So I guess he's going to fill this up to 10 and try to use the tanks to ward off and uh, gain access to this property. We'll see how that goes. And on the following turn, we see that he's finishing the caps. The recon will just move one space back me and there's probably additional aggression coming from the south. And he's using it to block that infantry from going to the city here, which is actually pretty good. Even if he takes the hit, he's blocking the income and probably zoning it with tanks of his own. We can see the infantry goes um, to a back position and there's more infantry of his own coming on this side and as we can see just quickly there, the tanks are basically guarding this property and so he's essentially reinforcing on this side in order to ensure cap over here and that is essentially uh, on the two player side how you're going to play out the first eight ish turns uh, of the match and take yourself in the mid game let's have a quick look at the map stats for cycles to gehenna gehenna meaning a place or state of misery and with the amount of planes tiles on here if you're a tire based unit on the battlefield you're definitely in that place infantry usually splits between 18 and 22 thousand and stealths are allowed the usual black bombs are banned of the top COs in tier 3 on this map, Drake takes a 52% win rate, whereas Grim players a tier down are only seeing a 32% success rate. During the replay, pay extra close attention to these highlighted properties. All of them range from somewhat to heavily contested. And getting right into the capture phase, day 1 has Grim Guy probably starting by building 2 infantry and passing the turn. There's 1, 2. And we flip over to Kill Me first. Let's see, it'll be interesting to see if we actually follow the patterns of capture that we were discussing earlier if we're going to see some early recon aggression if we're going to see a little bit of uh mech spamming if we're going to see some artillery early on okay kill me first going towards the second base probably the best one next infantry most likely going to try to capture the or back capture the city passing the turn over to grim guy grim guy going north towards the cities from the west base building another infantry and east for the capture. Let's have a quick look at this. So this infantry here is gonna spend this day and the next day capturing and then has an easy walk up right here to the next city as we discussed a little bit earlier. Um, this infantry here is gonna immediately go to the left and probably capture this city here. It's the fastest way to get an income on the map. And if you look at the penguin in the top north base on the blue side, same deal. We're gonna see capture on this in all likelihood, capture on this, second infantry is gonna go over here and then go towards back capping these. Be interesting. This will be the day if we uh, see Kill Me First on his next turn building an early recon, or if he's going to be 
uh, saving up and doing an artillery. So all the normal capture stuff. We're probably not going to see engagements until day 6, the absolute earliest, but probably more likely day 8 or day 9. Usual capture stuff. This all looks pretty standard right now. You can see the uh, board flip in action in terms of that kind of first turn advantage being passed back and forth with that additional infantry in terms of value. Grim guy with the capture. Kill me first now, evening out capture game. Day four, nothing too crazy to see here. Although we do see kill me first already getting the city over here in the east of the map. And Grim Guy being short of city. So it looks like his capture game is going to be a little bit different. But not too, too much. We have the first tank on day four. So having a look at this tank here, we can see that reinforcements to the center are going to take two turns. So first turn could get you over to this tile here or over here if you need to so that you can essentially zone out part of this middle of the map but it's going to be really difficult to defend but remember this two base side no matter where you build from here or here it's the same amount of distance and time from the base so it doesn't really matter which one you build for unless of course you're doing a southward push and the same goes here to do a northward wood, uh, northward push the same goes on the left side of the map for grim guy to do a northward push but let's see what what goes on so a tank's going to get some early harass in all likelihood, go down south. We'll see if Grim Guy also responds by building a tank on his west side of the map. Okay, it looks like Grim Guy's backing off with this infantry over here. He's probably going to go capture this building. Uh, I don't know if I uh, agree with that. You probably want to head north as fast as you can to try to take this tower and at least secure some of these um, buildings or do some early harasser zoning out. Well, he's building... He's building an artillery on that side, so Grim Guy Artillery channeling Star Flash right here. Again, I would have liked to have had this infantry possibly um, go north to give additional walling to this artillery, because the artillery is a bit of a momentum hit. And it's also a little bit weird seeing a tank come up on the strong side of the opponent. I know uh, we're kind of not fans of weak side tanks, but you can always stick an artillery here to zone this building out a little bit and ensure that you get a capture on it, because once the infantry and mechs and all the units start to move into this area it's really hard to recapture or capture these properties there's uh, not only are these highly contested they're also very very vulnerable to to attacks just like your hq is because you have the two bases so close here and fighting over the center and reinforcements from this base again one turn so a tank can get roughly here and then this area so it takes three full turns to get into the center to engage that's what makes the center on this map so important, but also makes both sides vulnerable to an east-west, sorry, to a north-south base uh, race. Or base. So Grim Guy with another tech choice, doing a little bit of mech spam here. Not mech spam, sorry. Grim Guy with another weird tech choice, with another tech choice, with an infant, uh, with a mech. So I guess he's planning to put this towards the mountains and maybe give a little bit of protection here. But again, a mech is not going to have the mobility of this tank. So once the tank spends one turn getting somewhere around here, it's going to be free harass on any of these infantry. He's basically seeding the east side of this map right now. So I'm, I don't know if I like that play very much. But he also didn't really have the infantry. Let's go back for a second and have a peek. He's, yeah, so he didn't really have the income. 8,000... So 6,000 income, yeah, he, yeah, that's a tough one. It was the, I think this artillery was not was not the best buy. But we'll find out. It could come into play later. The, the map is a little bit choky. You do see a lot of arty play on this. All right, so Kill Me First is already moving into the center to begin capping this property here. He has an income lead of about 3,000 already. We'll see if that flips a little bit. So it'll be 2,000, 1,000. The income lead will disappear next turn. So it's not really an income lead. My apologies. Yeah, so this tank now covers this building, this building, and is a t this infantry. So he can finish this cap here, but this infantry is a free hit, or this infantry is going to be stopped from capping over here, and there's nothing to stop. There's no answer to the tank in the south right now. Although he has enough funds to create a tank, the tank will still be behind because it's going to take one turn to get here or here, depending on where this tank goes, to force it back. So this tank's going to get a little bit of uh, value for free. 
There's also a recon in the north if you notice. So recon has a little bit tougher time on this map because of the sheer amount of planes on it. Moving is still going to take one turn and two, so it can do some guarding here quite easily. And the recon will have a little bit more difficulty than a tank would because of all the planes uh, zoning out and artillery, but it's not impossible. It's a good choice against the sheer amount of infantry that's going to be coming here and a cheap, quick solution to kind of stalling out the weak side of the map because you basically want to stall this side as long as possible and win the center if you can. So let's see what Grim Guy does. So finishes his caps. The income is now equalized again. And Grim Guy's actually ahead in income now and beginning some more caps. It looks like he'll be about a thousand ahead per turn right now, which isn't really that big of a deal. So he goes all the way deep. He moves his infantry. Sorry. So Grim Guy goes deep. Let's look at. Uh, the artillery so he's moving the artillery all the way to the north that's blocking or sorry that that's basically locking down this uh city right here and you can potentially do some maneuvering and use it to prevent capping on this and and lock down the uh, the harbor it's going to take the recon two turns to get there but there are also more infantry in this area there's no reinforcements or or ooh, i'm moving that sorry there's no reinforcements so this infantry can sort of come along with this artillery, but this is one, two, two to three days away from being useful. So unless something is built in one of these two bases that can have the mobility to get up here quickly, it walling off with this artillery is probably not going to work out too well. We do have a tank in response here, but again, remember, it's going to take one turn to get to either side just to uh, push back and zone out this tank, which means this tank's probably going to get free hits on something. In all likelihood, it's going to go towards the center. One, because pushing towards the center is advantageous at times. And two, because there's a mech down here that is protecting this infantry. However, he could also choose to not take uh, a hit, move it towards the center anyways, and start to just solidify this area and take over these cities, guarding against these infantry since there wouldn't be an answer here necessarily because he would need an answer both in the north to protect his artillery or back off with it. But let's see what happens. I did not recenter that map very well at all. My apologies. Okay, so kill me first, moving some infantry to do the back capping now. Day six, still no engagements. Not completely unusual. Oh yeah, and there we go. He actually took the hit for the uh, infantry on the city. Remember that Grimm's minus 20% defense, 80% total, leaves him extremely vulnerable to attacks. It's what makes playing against Grimm and as Grimm so difficult and so push dependent. It's all about positioning and timing with Grimm. Sorry, I said Grimm, with Grimm guy. With Grim Guy, it's all about positioning and timing. His, he's very fragile. His units with only 80% defense can really, really get destroyed on buildings with tons of defense. Even with a superpower active, it's only 90%. So we see the recon in the north now threatening this artillery. So the artillery is going to have to move somewhere. There really isn't infantry to block. He's probably going to have to pull this back and potentially take... The infantry here to create a bit of a wall uh, scenario so unfortunately it looks like nothing's gonna happen for grim guy here in the north we have another tank it's grim guy continuing the cap game going for his airport he's gonna be a turn ahead on the airport from kill me first so we could see him leading the T-Copter and going for the comm towers of the additional income in the south over here. Or we might see a copter finally come into play and zone out either the tanks on the weak side here, which is probably the most likely thing, or a push north to do something about uh, zoning with this artillery and locking down the ports. Although it looks like there's nothing he's going to be able to do to stop Kill Me First from getting both the port and the comm tower in the next two turns. As I 
and I think he's going to need the forces over here in the southeast just because of the number of tanks coming down. Uh, it is the strong side, so he, there's going to always be a heavy push downwards. But let's see what Grim Guy does. So he's taking that cap. He's baiting the. He's baiting this cap right here to try to force this recon to come in and attack. He would be able to. Hmm. It looks like he might be able to build an infantry wall here, moving this infantry over and then the artillery to block. Um, thanks to the terrain, this recon is not able to get through this forest, so you could place it potentially here. or here. And then have this for one more turn, and then guarantee that you'll get this cap, and even if you do take some damage, he yeah, he's not going to attack you. That's probably the best one. Okay, moving to take this capture here and draw the tank away from destroying this 5 HP infantry. Um, you might even want to just leave this 5 HP infantry because one, it's going to die very easily. You can get more damage attacking this guy and bringing him down to 5, delaying this cap. And this sitting on the building will take more damage. So Grim Guy probably wants to move this off and use it as a blocker to protect this infantry over here, but we'll see. He does move the artillery onto... <laughs> we're going north-south here. He does move the artillery onto this forest. So all he has to do is move the infantry to, to block. This will secure it for one more turn, but not, not longer than that because the, uh, the recon will be able to move around. Yep, as suspected, he does. So this other infantry could potentially be a blocker late stage, but right now he does have these infantry protected. He's going to get this cap. What's next? Okay, bringing this infantry north. So we're continuing the northward push, or in this case, stabilization, because we need to zone out this recon until some sort of reinforcement arrives on, the, on this side. With an income of 13, it's not a magic number, so we're, we're probably looking at a tank in infantry on this side, and then nothing on the weak side uh, of note. I'm not sure. It's, a, it's really a hard call there. Maybe a recon, but a re no, a recon wouldn't work. Okay, he's moving this infantry, so I, I guess... Uh, He's setting up to do something about this property here. I would have probably just continued to move him north because you need a little bit more support if you're going to do anything with this artillery. This problem with building artillery on many maps is they just eat up your tempo. You need units to block for them unless there's something that's really choky that you can have an advantageous point, like behind mountains. Although even here, um, it can easily get zoned out by uh, mechs or by other... It's, it's not a great spot. I, I've seen it played here. I don't really see the point in protecting this one single city. It's 6,000 resources to protect one city. If this had the backing of the sea tile was over in this area here, it'd be doing a lot more work, but right now all it's done is move and not be in, been able to zone out. It, the 6,000 um, the six thousand cost unit plus these infantry, basically seven or 8,000 if you want to count it, have been held off by a unit of half their value and done absolutely nothing. Neck moves north. Okay, so we're inviting a first strike on this tank. And that might seem like a good idea. I'm not sure if it is. Let's go back for one second. So from where this tank is here, a backup tank, if he was to build it here, could only come into one of these two positions. So to put it over here means even though you are going to build another tank, you're going to get a first strike. You're probably going to go down to 3 HP, maybe 4 and then build another tank, but it's not going to scare this one off. The tank can finish it off, uh, and then w it, it, it's a free kill. Th this is a free kill in my mind. Even if he builds another tank here, it's not a great move. If you wanted to invite him, you could have gone one position back so that the tank would come down here, trade a tank, trade a tank. You're in the reinforcement zone. You can, you can push back, and of course we have another tank in infantry uh, on the way. Yeah, he does use the 5 HP infantry to, to protect from the tank on this side, so the tank's probably going to take tank-on-tank -tank engagement. And we have infantry, infantry, tank, 3,800 in the bank. Kill me first, now starting to take his airport, like we suspected, one turn behind. Takes the center cap, one of the contested properties, two of the contested properties. Now beginning a cap on the third, so he has a 2,000 income lead, and soon, soon to be a 3,000. 
has a 2,000 income lead this turn. However, Grim Guy is working on two caps, so three caps actually. It'll all get balanced out. And he's going for... And like we thought last turn, we're going to do... And as we thought last turn, we have both the port and the comm tower. Both the port and the comm tower being captured. This uh, infantry is going to do back capture over here. And we're beginning to take this property here. There's, again, nothing to stop it. This tank here is going to be preoccupied trying to deal with this tank or coming over here for one turn to attempt to zone out further tank movement. Again, this is the weak side. You're not going to be able to hold this off for very long. So building a tank to take a pot shot is probably not the best. And he's behind enough now that it might be worth just holding back, building some units, pushing towards the center. Another tank in the north for Kill Me First. Kill Me First actually moving the recon onto this road. So he's got protection here. Um, again, we're not really able to threaten the artillery, but he's not going to plan to attack any of these here. This basically stops. Um, <clears throat> Grim Guy is going to get this cap here. And, I mean, what are you going to do? Take this cap? You, you need to back off at this point or continue an infantry wall. Move this over here or go the cap over here, or pull all of these back, try to get the cap over here and lose this inventory. Although he's gonna get the building and it'll balance out for a couple of turns. It, it's just the mobility here is gone. You really need to be able to move units because it takes so long to get units to the fronts here. It, you really have to build faster units first, secure your fronts, and then begin a slow push from behind, backing up with artillery. They really need an escort of two to three other units, depending on what they are, especially ones that can move as far and as fast as they can, which infantry generally are not. Kill me first going towards the center to get more properties. It looks like he, it's not very contested. He's going to probably get the property lead, I would assume. And yeah, he's moved the tank into the center, so he's saying, I'm taking all of these center properties. There's nothing you can do about it. This infantry is now useless. You can finish your cap here and keep pushing over the mountain slowly, but then you're going to lose momentum in the north where you only have an artillery and nothing that can really stop or zone out. Right? So... Grim Guy's looking like he's in a bit of a rough situation. It's still only day seven, though. It's still pretty early. And, like, the engagements are extremely low. Like, let's look at the power meter for a second. 700 and 350. So, nothing. Yep, second tank moving towards the center for Kill Me First. Definitely saying, I'm not worried about the lower north, or sorry, the lower southeast quadrant anymore. I'm going towards the center. I'm going to take the center. I'm going to get all of the properties in the center. Center, 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 center. And another tank. So... We have a tank chain going there. Yeah, and more infantry moving towards the center. So unless a bunch of forces comes here, and it's going to be unlikely, we're already behind. One, two, three tanks. Yeah. The center to me looks looks kind of lost. This might have to become a bit of a base race where there's a large uh, sum of forces and they push across towards the HQ and... All right. Day 8 for Grim Guy. Does his first cap, forgets about the other two, starts. Forgets about his other caps, begins another cap. One, two, three, four. That's good. So he's now ahead in the income game for one turn again. He's repairing his 5 HP infantry on the HQ. This is probably going to stay there for the foreseeable future. I don't see him moving it off and taking fire and getting destroyed from this building which is now impossible for him to get uh kill me first is lock down both the properties in front of the mountains these are so hard to get back once they're gone uh or you know by day, day six seven if you're not situated enough to get a cap going on day eight day nine then there's going to be enough heat in this area that capturing these is they're either going to remain neutral or already captured they're not really going to swing either way We're getting infantry proliferation into the center now. But again, infantry... Th this looks like a plan that's going to have to take a few turns to come to fruition. Grim Guy is going to have to create a bunch of infantry, hold the walls, hope they hold out, and get some tanks going behind them so that he can get the first strikes on the tanks with his tanks. Otherwise, we're in trouble. Looks like he's moving the artillery and trying to get walls going and get ready to essentially try to hold out this area or take, take this city for some reason. I think it would have been much easier to 
recap this building here in the north and then retreat the forces for a few turns and, and build up. Again, this artillery is just, it's momentum killing. It's not actually aiming at anything right now and it's in danger of this recon. So he's going to have to dedicate a third infantry unit over here j just to block. And that means infantry units are out of position, unable to capture, unable to contest. Could he have moved that to a, another spot? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know why he wouldn't have just moved the artillery to this spot here, at least temporarily zoning out this city. I guess the, the reason would be because he has nothing to block it, that's why. So it might be, I'm thinking too far ahead. That might be, uh, the next move would be shifting down but they're, gr they're Grim Guy Infantry. They're not going to hold out. They have 80% defense. We have another tank on the way in the north. Okay, so Grim Guy builds a tank. And he is moving two tanks towards the center. But again, let's look at this. One tank isn't going to zone out two tanks. Especially if you're getting the hit. And this tank is very unable to protect. So if, we engage, if Grim Guy engages with his northmost tank, this tank is not going to be able to, to protect it. So the zone is very weak and it's going to take a while to back up and we have this third one as the problem and I'm sure a fourth one could appear because we're getting tanks on both sides we have a magic number or we're almost at a magic number or sorry we are actually at a magic number here tank tank infantry don't worry about the airport right now so I think what Grim needs to do is tech into a copter and then copter two turns to get into here it's gonna take two or three turns for an anti-air to come unless there's a preemptive day at anti-air because someone's part of the Church of Deej they're a Deej disciple, then maybe. We'll see. So, second tank and infantry. Yep, as, as suspected. Now, this mech has moved back. I guess this mech is supposedly guarding this city over here. And is it may be able to cross over in case some wayward tanks or infantry come this way. You can take a few shots to wall break, but there's no wall here. It doesn't look like there's going to be a push into this area. This mech effectively hasn't done anything to warrant its value that an infantry couldn't have done. So not a great choice early game. Back capping properties for kill me first. Securing the port, securing the building, taking the taking the income lead by about 2,000 and threatening to take the income lead by 3,000 by taking that city in the center. And we've moved this tank. This tank now effectively pushes back um, an, an infantry, uh, one infantry strike and one recon strike can take out pretty much any defensive grit infantry, allowing a tank hit to just decimate this artillery unit. So it's really time for this to back off. Tanks are still not able to fully provide support. He needs to pull this probably back to this, back to this spot if he wants to cover the city, or back to the city if he wants to hold out a little bit longer. But as far as I'm concerned, the battle for the north is, is lost. The battle for this property on the center is not a great idea. You can potentially lock this one down and hold this area out and just start funneling troops in to retake the center and push push across a little bit and up towards the HQ. Kill me first. Tons of infantry movement. Again, see, he's going to ensure that there are joint caps available for this property and this property. So he's going to take the center. He's going to hold an income lead, I think, for the foreseeable future of at least one to 2,000. Tanks rolling out. Another tank built in this base over here, of course. Artillery now coming up in the north for Kill Me First. So he's now either going to Kill Me First. So he's probably going to wrap this around and either push downwards with it or start to guard his HQ with it. But I, uh, in case there's... Start to guard his HQ with it in case there's a push. I'm not exactly sure if we're going to see a push or not. I would I would guess he's not going to position it over here uh, between the mountains. I don't really see him needing to protect anything unless he's really worried about this property here. But he's already got a tank. He's, he's got enough to wall break anything and threaten to completely obliterate this artillery unit. So unless Grim Guy pushes north with all of his tanks and starts to focus over here instead of trying to take the center, which is what he really should be doing, unless he's going for a base race... Sorry, uh, an HQ race. I, I just don't see it, but we'll see. Tank moving up. So, yep, yeah, we're, we're reinforcing the position over here. So this artillery is probably going to swing around on the next turn. We'll see. But back to Grim Guy. Day 9. Grim Guy is now moving towards his 
first comm tower. Keep in mind, Kill Me First already has his comm tower, which is not great. Grits 80% defense, remember. Moving towards the back caps, and he's actually going to go for this city. I, I hesitate to think this is a good idea. He just does not have the units to stop a tank, another tank, an incoming tank, all this infantry with his lower defense against the increased, an enemy with increased firepower from a comm tower. However, um, he is going to go for the cap on this building over here. I'm supposing he's going to throw the mech and an infantry to block and just sacrifice them. Oh, but there's two tanks here. I don't know if he has the ability to hold out on this cap or if this is just, just to divert forces. Could be a diversionary tactic. He is covering it with the mech. So there is chance for some extreme income loss. He is behind by a thousand right now. So he could use that. And yep, we finally see a copter. Day nine, we see a copter. Will we see an anti-air next turn? We probably should by kill me first. So we have that copter. Copter's probably gonna push, I would suspect north first, just so it can start to look at this area. And I wouldn't suspect it to go all the way east unless he's very worried about losing this area. Although that said, if he is going for this cap and he thinks he can join cap and get it, which I don't see, but I'm not a high level player like Grim. Yeah, there, there might be more utility in moving the copter east. But at some point, you're going to have to decide which where you're going to converge your fronts. So that artillery now moving towards the west. I guess he's going to try for a westward push up towards... I'm not sure what. Um, just to get this property here. It is, it is blocking off a future cap. But it now no longer covers these infantry, which moved with it for several turns. Yeah, artillery is hard on this map, unless you have a CO that specializes in it, like in a lower tier, you could see a lot of Jake play on this map for sure. Maybe some Jess. Grim Guy pulling his tank back one. I'm not, I have to look at this move again. So right now, it looks like he's trying to concentrate forces so he can maybe guard in the north a little bit. But by moving his tank back two to here, yeah, he's guaranteeing some protection for it, but it's barely covering these two. I'm, I'm not sure what's what's going through his head, but then again, he's grim. He might know better than I. Uh, this infantry either going to come down, come down for a block. No need to block, so this infantry can... So these two tanks, I guess, have better positioning to push up northwards, and the infantries are blocking over here, although there's nothing... Tanks moving forward. So Grim is concentrating his tanks in this quadrant. Infantry, infantry on that side. Hold on. Yeah, 2600, infantry, infantry, tank. Kill me first with 20,000 now. 21,000. 3,000 income over Grit. Sorry, over 3,000 income over Grim, although Grim can lower that gap by 1,000, making a 2,000 gap next turn, as long as this cap isn't interrupted, although it looks like it very well might be, at least by a Penguin. So it'll be delayed at least one more turn. Kill me first. Ramping up his lead by another 1,000. Yep, takes, takes the shot on the infantry. And brings a second infantry in to continue the coverage. Uh, Penguin over here, probably going to start and either harass or, sorry, harass cap or zone out and base block over here. Sorry. Port block over here. Which means this tank is probably going to sweep southwards. Streaming more infantry and tanks into the center, protecting the HQ. This forward tank, although it's being targeted by several tanks, is covered by this tank. This tank is covering this tank, so there's a good chance we're going to see a little bit of a pull, either a pullback in the center here, or more reinforcements. We do have, we, we know that he's going to have his comm tower in the next couple of days. Grim, no action on the second comm tower, and as well as the first. <clears throat> okay, there we go. So we have the recon interrupt. 
Uh, tank's probably going to spin around and take an attack of its own because it's then going to be covered by three other tanks and Grim will be able to do nothing. So I'm, I'm wagering this is either going to attack this infantry or the or swing around and uh, sorry I think we're probably I think we're probably gonna see this penguin come and finish off this and this tank pull down and attack this infantry another tank coming in so the artillery actually did go into this area uh, I don't know if I agree with that I'd rather pull it towards the front and have it backing up the troops especially since you're building fronts here but who knows Oh, tank goes onto the city. So, okay, I guess Kill Me First really worried about these two cities swinging because of the tank presence here. Lots of infantry movement and repositioning. Okay, Grim moving to make sure that the port does not get interfered with, and he really needs to start capping that comm tower. Comm tower is finally being capped. We're getting additional income finally on this small island over here. Although he's got a 4,000 deficit right now. Cap on this building is still two turns away if it's not interrupted any further. And there's a good chance it will be. Grim daringly taking this capture. I, I mean, you're in range of three infantry. You have nothing else to support this infantry. You can move the artillery up there, but then it's just going to be zoned out by... Well, and these guys can do probably two damage, one or two damage on the artillery themselves. So I don't think this was a good idea, although he might be doing it to divert some forces. I don't think you're going to pull a tank over here. Day 10, we don't really see much power charge for either user. So the mech still... Uh, giving some protection, although less coverage from vehicles now. It, vehicle can easily attack from the north or from the west and not be hit unless and, and not be hit by a mech unless this cap is stopped. Goes for goes for the kill instead of continuing the cap. So I guess he's just he's already said I'm not going to get this property right now. I'm not going to join cap it. I'm just going to hold court. Fair enough. Tank swings around. Grim tank. Swings around and attacks on a building. 5-7 uh, engagement. I'm reminded heavily of Advance Wars 1. Are we going to see him finish this tank off with the second tank? Yes, we are. Does that mean we're going to see infantry going onto the building? We're going for cap? No, we're going for an attack. And finish that infantry off. Okay. We have a third tank moving in to zone this position. Okay. That seems good. However, we have three tanks. This one now zoning, which did not attack. And one, two, three, four healthy tanks in range. This looks like a... Ooh, we're going to need a lot of infantry blocking and great position to do anything about this. Okay, so Grim's backing off of the center. So he's kind of taking his attack and pushing down and towards... Sorry, he's taking... He's taking... Grim is taking his attack away from the enemy HQ and pushing down into the center to try and secure it. He's going to need a lot of really intelligent positioning with infantry to, to kind of keep that at bay because he's short on the number of tanks that can act. He does not want to get first struck. Lots of infantry movement. Yeah, So we have good infantry walls happening. Okay, so he did in fact move the artillery north to try to dissuade attacks. It's still going to be a two-hit KO on the city, so this cap is as good as stopped. Right? Sacrificing one penguin to an artillery to stop a cap it's a win because not only are you going to two hit KO this and get the thousand income from that, you're going to lose a thousand equalizing it. The artillery is going to have to spend its turn shooting instead of positioning to a better target. And he's not going to get the income two turns later. So this is actually going to cost Grim a lot more than just the 1000 on the unit and the tempo loss. It would have been much better to have had this position somewhere over here so that the artillery could at least be guarding, say this city. So if the city get, is camped and used to push down onto these units here, you'd have some some counterplay. Continuing this cap on the city with seven left, that's just saying I, I'm sitting here and I'm going to force you to attack it so that you don't get one free attack from the well-defended city. Fair enough. Kill me first. Loading up that copter and going towards the island. So you'll notice, let's back up for a second, you'll notice that this copter does not make it to the island. So you, you have two drop-off points. You can drop off north and go 
You can drop off north and go to the building first. Drop off north and go to the building first. Or you can drop off to the comm tower. The comm tower is usually the popular choice. Uh, I did watch a match earlier with Kindle where she basically super power, or she, where she normal powered someone who just dropped off here and they probably could have held out a turn and captured one of the cities instead and then backed to the comm tower. But uh, that, that video will be another day. So, going for the second comm tower. Grit still working on his first. Watch. Yeah. So let's look at the conflict in the north here. Pay attention to this infantry. Eight to four. So this is going to get hit. Gone. Start the cap. So what is this artillery supposed to fire on? It could fire here, but then you're taking. You're going to start taking fire from the penguins. All right. Th this this just needs to be retreated. This is a this is a lost cause. You can fire here and stop the cap for one turn, and they're just going to come down and start attacking. There's a recon on the way, so you're you're one turn away from being zoned and this doing nothing. It really needs to move out. Pushing north to this building is a lost cause at this point. You need the enforcements. You're grim. You need the enforcements in the center of the map where the conflict is happening because you do not want to get first struck. You need as many bodies as you can in front of this in front of your damage dealing units for first striking. Yeah, and there's the recon. Zoned. Now we have some capture action here. This looks more like a distraction. Um, Grim will be able to attack and, and prevent this from happening. However, that takes this infantry away from being able to interfere up here, block up here, or take some of these cities back now that there's less activity here. And we're aggressively taking the city here too. There's only one unit that can attack it right now. If we look carefully, one unit. This infantry will have to choose which of these caps to stop, but he's going to lose a building. That's devastating. Artillery coming to back up over here. Finally swung around. It wasn't really doing anything in this spot to begin with. For a few turns, it would have been better to have mobilized it already. But we're going to come and secure the west side of the map. This is a lost cause. Even though it's a two-base side, Grimm's positioning is very, very poor right now. He needs to regroup. All right, kill me first, going for some attacks. Is he going to go really aggressive in the center, or is he just doing some pot shots and positioning? Stopping the cap, taking a first strike and destroying a grim tank. We're seeing some power charge now. Second recon unit moves to the west, so we're basically this artillery is a lost cause. You can probably run it, run it back down here and use these infantry to block, and then maybe squeeze it somewhere in amidst these bases, build a few other units and dissuade these recons. But yeah, unless this moves, it's a lost cause. You might even just sunk cost it and start attacking the recon or stopping this cap and letting the, letting it die, but I don't think that's a great idea. Tank takes a strike. We have the anti-air coming in, so this copter this copter is basically probably best used to punch north and secure this, unless we're going to start building a copter chain and try to zone out an anti-air with tanks, but I just don't see that happening. Plus, with another copter on the way. Tanks moving east. Tanks moving south. Okay, Grim Guy's turn. We're almost to a power. Are we going to see a normal power? We might see a normal power this turn. Let's see. He is at 2270. So he is less than 4,000, less than 5,000 away. Yeah, he's, four, he's 4,300 away, so he can get a power. I don't know if a power would be necessarily good right now. Um, the problem with a Grim power is because his defense is so low, it doesn't really zone out your opponent, whereas an Adder power, you're worried about positioning. With a Grim guy power, you basically want to want to use it and do an immediate push and make sure that there are so few units that can counterattack you. Although you do get a 10% damage, sorry, you do get a 10% um, bonus to defense. I'm not sure uh, if he's got the position to do it, although he might be far enough behind that he wants to start taking shots. He's got his comm tower too, so that's going to push his attack up to 140. He decides to go for the port instead of the center building. I probably would have backed off and taken... Hmm. I could see wanting to back off and take the center building, but it's easier to protect this 
this property from this base and to stop him from taking this over and building like a YOLO carrier or a battleship. And then if you back off of this area too, it doesn't stop this penguin from coming and harassing over here. Grim taking the strike. 7-5. The 3 HP tank is running away. I'm not sure if I would have kept that around to maybe try to strike on something else. Um, sack this infantry for power charge. Move this infantry up and attack. F full strike the 8 HP should destroy it. And then maybe use this as a blocker because you have so many other incomings, but let's see what he does. He's going to finish that tank off on the city. Infantry is going to take a strike. Full HP tank is going to take out the 8 HP tank. Hmm. So he went for the 3 HP. Will the 2 HP infantry try to take out the 3 HP? Yeah, and are we going to see a power? We have power activate, or we don't have power activation, but are we going to see a power? If he does not use the power this turn, and kill me first is loaded up kill me first might be enticed to not wait for the super and push back that one hp damage is so vital that one hp damage is so good against grim just because of how low his defenses are and it would compensate for that 10 percent defense in spades gonna retreat the two hp infantry and not even use it as a blocker takes out the three hp backs off of the city and he's gonna take a strike on the nine hp infantry bringing it down to two it's still a bit of a weakness. It's easy for this tank to come down and get a strike or this anti-air and then Yeah, it's still easy for this anti-air to come and finish off one of these or to or even worse dual strike with the uh, Infantry on infantry and get a tank in here and get another first strike on a tank with two more tanks incoming It's not looking good in here. This copter is also heavily zoned out one by distance It's not able to get where it needs to get. It can't really do anything but attack what might show up on the front lines, and whatever that is is going to be guarded by this anti-air. It's a very rough position. There's a good chance this copter then is going to come south on the next turn and be a real real problem for Grim Guy. Pulls the copter all the way north. Yep, so that gets it out of anti-air range. Um, not that it was an anti-air range, but basically it gives it way better coverage of both of these fronts. It can now switch if it needs to. Probably the best decision for that. It also helps to, you know, uh, push Kill Me First to decide what to do with this copter or to create a copter chain. Second copter going east, probably going to start taking on this infantry, unless, of course, it's threatening to push north. Mech now threatening um, this infantry, but this infantry is still going to get the cap. Lots of engagements in the north. So he, he took the shot. He took the shot. He's basically sacrificing this artillery. This, this artillery is pretty much dead. Um, I mean, it's a good thing movement's not great on this map because he could totally push down and base it over here. Oh, I stand corrected. There's the tank. Moving this tank into range, even on a city. Uh, I probably your best move I'm not sure I'm not sure there's no yeah there's no real safe place to move it so you move it onto the city and it's protected by this one sort of hmm. I, I he, he's really struggling on the strong side additional tank so he's held off on the power will we see a kill me first power so grim guys holding on to a power is kill me first gonna use it or hold on to it uh, Kill Me First is 3,000 ahead in income right now. He's about to be 4,000 ahead in income. Well, technically 5 because he's going to be stealing a property this turn. There's the cap. 5,000 income change. And up here in the north, yeah, we can see that the recon's going for the artillery. Both recon's taking that out. That artillery is bye-bye. <laughs> the 1 HP cap, taking it down to 9. We're probably going to see a join cap up here. Well, we might. Yeah, definitely a join cap, so that'll be sorted next turn. Nine, nine easy. That's perfect. Um, this 3 HP infantry is as good as gone. Not a big deal. You might as well just leave it and not take the engagement. And he's going to have to reposition artillery over here. What, let's see what he does with that tank. Is he going to do anything? So the artillery going behind. So we're just fortifying this position. I think it's a little bit unnecessary, but this is probably a turn one. Move and fortify position. Turn two. Start pushing down. We're going to see... 
So he's gonna recover that three HP infantry, move the tank in for the finish instead of moving in the front. Fair enough, you probably don't wanna take one damage on one of your units or for the cap. Anti-air taking out the infantry sitting on the bait or sitting on the city. Tank first strike. I Killing that seven HP tank was really good. What's the follow-up though? I almost would have said, okay, that's a seven HP tank. It can do a lot of damage with um but he probably could have gotten a really good hit off on this one too. Uh, it, it's a choice. His is probably better than mine. I'm just thinking out loud. Finishing off that infantry, stopping him from capping. Taking another infantry down to one. See if he had powered there. Okay. Wow. Oh my god. Are we going to see a Grim Super CO power before? Before Is Kill Me First going to... So is Kill Me First going to wait till the end of the turn, pop his single power, and do the damage? Because he's not backing off. So he knows he's he's got a Knuckle Duster coming. He's got a Grim Super CO power coming next turn. Although... Grim doesn't have a lot of units to do a ton of damage. It can still be a very good push. He can definitely push back in the north if he wants to or reassert himself in the center. Let's see what he does. Is Battlecopter coming south? T-Copter returning. I guess he's going to pick up another infantry maybe take it somewhere or use it as a blocker in the center. Probably what I would do. Second Battlecopter. Infantry repositioning. Tank repositioning, builds an infantry, moves a tank. We still have a lot of income. Are we going to see a tech up? Or are we just going to see a bunch of units? So. Sorry, he has 12,000. We see an anti-air in the north, so to dissuade. Although, remember, look at the movement. It still takes anti-air a few turns to zone out a copter. So because of the nature of this map, you almost need two anti-air to zone out two copter. Right, two anti-air to zone out copter activity in an area, if not three, one for reinforcements. Whereas you normally get the one anti-air can zone out two or so copters. It's almost a one-to-one -one on this map. Grim Guy's turn. So, Kill Me First held the power. Grim Guy is extremely close to a superpower. But by he superpower, he'd have to take enough engagements. So will he pop the power here and make a push? Let's see what he does. Oh. So let's let's have a look here. You're five thousand down in income. Even if he did did a power with his calm tower, hundred and seventy percent attack, what are we gonna accomplish here? He could push back and destroy, do a lot of damage in the center here. However, this copter is out of range. So even if he destroys this tank, this anti-air, and heavily damages this tank or this tank, which he wouldn't be able to do and would get decimated on the counter push, there's no anti-air here for this copter. So the copters would have to move. He's zoned out over here. He's lost the battle in the north. He's way behind on income. It's just... Ooh, that's a rough 100 showing. But I have some good news for you. Not only has Grim Guy been hunting in the fog, but he's also engaged in his 101st match of Mortal Kombat as he continues his upward struggle to put Grim on top of the ladder. Hey, this is Glitch. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend, leave your feedback, and tell me how to make the next one better for you. Glitch out.